Hey everybody, sorry about that. Um, I was just changing a few settings. This is, it's good to do that every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we don't have too many people joining us today. Um, just me and Kier, basically. And uh, we're just going to hang out and I'm going to work on some of the town buildings. Um, it's not exactly what I was doing earlier this week, but uh, we want to hold back some of the later dungeon content um, for a little bit. So thought since this had been shown at PAX, um, could kind of uh, work on it a little bit. So I'm trying to struggle with, uh, not struggle, but work on the composition. I need to fit nine buildings in, and then I have to consider the location of the, uh, oops, of the HUD, which is locked, um, which is like that. So I'm just kind of jockeying the position around and uh, trying to figure out where things fit and get rid of tangents and that kind of thing, and then um, hopefully I'll have some a chance to get in there and start uh, cleaning up the actual art a little bit. So are you going to do like a blanket pass on everything or are you going to focus on one building? No, I have to work on everything. Like I'm trying to solve these like big problems of are the buildings like overlapping properly? Is the whole thing like readable from a distance? You know, before I worry about like drawing the windows on the on the fucking buildings and the little window sills and you know, the crags in the in the tiles and all that kind of thing. I have to figure out the big problems. That's why I'm working in blue on top of it, so I can see what I'm doing. Mm. Is blue your preferred uh, outline color? It's my favorite color. Um, what about you? I'm I'm a fan of like a light green. A light green, dude. Come on. What? <laughs> Who says light green is their favorite color? Well, it always it becomes more complicated the older you get. Though I imagine you hit a point where you just like don't care anymore, and you go back to yeah, it's like birthdays. So, what have you been working on? I've been working on quests. Um, I could do my traditional reading through my Trello cards. Is it a tradition? <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been working on a lot of quests because uh, currently we only had uh, one um, one quest type and now we have five that we're fleshing out which will add a little bit more variety to the uh, to the current build of the game. Yeah, so it's not always just killing a boss. There are other things to do as well. And also I've been working on the uh, character panel which is your one-stop shop for everything about your character. Yeah, that, that got bigger than I thought. Um, and apparently it's got multiple pages, so... I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's getting <too> bigger than, <laughs> than, our, than I thought. <laughs> um, Jeff is asking about the types of quests. I don't know. We have, like... We're just working on the big categorical infrastructure stuff. We're not really, like, verbose yeah. kind of, like, in there with Billy in the Lost Well just yet. Yeah, I mean, currently we're uh, we're working on um, having a kill boss quest, so go to a dungeon and kill the boss. We're also going to have a gather quest where you have to gather items, um, a quest where you have to interact with a, different cur a certain amount of curios, and one where you have to explore all the map, and all that will dictate how the maps are generated as well. Yeah. So Pierre's uh, been working on that one, or that side of it. So based on quest length and quest type, we're going to have different generation logic. That sounded like a whole thing yesterday, so I just put my headphones on. Well, yeah, it's like <laughs> me, Tyler, and Pierre all trying to work on the same thing. Um it sounds like a lot of math and dumb stuff, so I just went out and partied instead of listening to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love partying. But yeah, we're we're still uh Yeah, we're still in the very early phases of quests, so Yeah, we spent a lot of our time doing, you know, like getting the core system stuff like combat especially really working and working well and you know, we have the barking and all these other things are in and working and town works. Um, but our poor quests haven't gotten much love just because we need all the other stuff to work before we worry about all the different things you're going to do with it. And then the other 
the other stuff we've been working on along those quests is like how they're generated. So how many are we generating per, um, per dungeon and what difficulties will they be and what rewards they'll have. So. Um, I think I saw Jesse on here. Yeah. Good old Jesse. <laughs> but, uh, you should organize your, your files. That's my take on, uh, doing these big paintings. Like, I have all my layers properly organized. I never do this, but I only do it on... You, you only know, do it when you're trying? Well, you know, when, <laughs> I, when you're on a big, ambitious thing with the background, mid-ground, all these buildings are going to have to be separated. Like, I'm going to live in this file for a long time um, in whatever subsequent, like, versions of it or whatever. So I actually took the time to set up, like, the properly positioned um, panels. It's a rough character panel. Um, so I would have some reference for where they go on top of the on top of the background. I have the HUD in there, and um, you know I've got the existing background, and then on top of it I'm actually doing the work. But I'm lazy as hell. But it, I've been burnt so many times by not setting things up properly on the on the big the big images. That's my word to the wise on that. And you're the only person touching this Photoshop file. Exactly. So. I could be. I should be able to be as disorganized as I want, but I can't, which is bullshit. Well, it probably is twice as important once another person's in there. Or um, even three times as important once one other person's in there. I'm sure shit gets lost all the time. We have that. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't worked on a project where people, two people opened a Photoshop file. There's always like one guy, the only person who ever opened up Photoshop and <laughs> did all the drawings. <laughs> so... I've seen it with Excel sheets when pe when multiple people had to open Excel sheets and it all fell apart. But um, oh, it's probably like code, you know. If you just well, code's kind of built for it. Like you're kind of expecting that other people are gonna work with it, or even that your past self you have to work with him. Or well, yeah, and I I have that problem too. Like I'm like, oh fuck, that was Thursday, Chris, that did this file, and I was like not paying attention or whatever. Yeah, you're kind of always dealing with like past versions of yourself when you load up old shit. Like one of the first things I worked on on Darkest Dungeon was a stat system that hasn't really been used and I've been using it for to do the quests to kind of keep track of like how many things you've interacted with and yeah, it's like working with a year ago Kier. So um so yeah, the uh, icons at the bottom of the screen. These are like quick navigation buttons to the uh, to the buildings in town, and ultimately you'll be able to click on the buildings themselves. Um, like you won't see this st stuff, um, and then you'll click on a building, and it'll bring up the panel, and then the quick nav buttons will appear as well. So you don't have to keep going back in, back out to town, and then back into another building. You can just jump from building to building here, and then when you like hit escape or whatever, um, it'll it'll all go away. And we're also probably gonna hotkey the. Hotkey it up with those building navigations. Uh, I would imagine that we would, yeah, for sure. Um, we got our first suggestion of the stream. Um, are there quests planned to rescue wounded, half crazed characters? Uh, characters like characters we made up, or characters that um, uh, characters like you can they, recruit. Uh, I don't know. Not not. I mean, it doesn't work right now because we just started. It's not a bad suggestion, yeah. though. Yeah, um, no, I think that I think that could be cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have a question about the skill upgrades. Is there okay. a limit of the amount of skill upgrades we can do on one character? Do you have it to specialize, or can you make a character that's extremely good at all of his skills? You can make a character that's extremely good at all their skills, but it is a bad idea. Well, you can only take a certain amount of skills into the dungeon in both combat and camping skills. Right, and then so, if, you, if you have a guy, say you have a highwayman and you've specced his four, like, close range skills or whatever and you love them so much you decide to spend all that money on the other three skills all the way upgraded to the end now that guy's like you're going to be precious with him because if you lose him that's a huge amount of money thrown down the drain you're better off actually I think my way of thinking about it is to have two highwaymen and spec them both differently so that if you lose one you know you still have that other guy instead of putting all your eggs in the proverbial basket I don't know what do you, what do you think um 
I think if you get a good quirk roll in the sense of like the highwayman's faults are uh, kind of limited by what quirks they have, you might want to have him be your all-purpose guy. Yeah, um, that's true if he's really undamaged. Like, but the costs are also going to be in effect. Like, yeah. I tried playing without giving myself free gold. Like, <laughs> That shit is hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm just used to um, having everything. Yeah, and it's similar to the, um, I guess, similar to the different builds and the new XCOM was one of the questions related to that. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit different because you're not going down a tree. You're kind of upgrading everything individually. But yeah, you're, you're going to have flexibility in how each of your classes end up. Hey, Chris. Yo. When we upgrade these buildings with our heirlooms, are there physical appearances going to change? We get that question a lot. Um, Do it, Chris. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the plan. Uh, you're gonna have a couple different upgrade appearances. You're not gonna like customize which windows you want on your church, um, but the church will start out really. Uh, everything will start out really, really run down, and as you upgrade it, it'll look nicer and nicer. Um, how far we're gonna go with that, I'm not sure just yet, um, but some version of it's gonna get in the game for sure. It also might be done through like animations and like when we put them when we put the buildings into spine animations it might um the amount of lights or the amount of smoke coming out of them. Yeah, plus we have all that uh color grading stuff now. Um so we can they can start out really burnt out looking and gray and then we can add more color to them too. But the the physical art will change, that's the plan anyway, as it's on the schedule. Is for me to do a couple of variations of them. Yeah, thanks to Slack Entertainment uh, for writing a dev blog. Yeah, um, that's right. We were really uh, inspired by Nick's post, and uh, so Pierre went ahead and cooked something up. <laughs> And we've been, yeah. There's still some stuff to sort out. So. Yeah, yeah. But um. But it's got us. Uh, so one of the cool things about this color grading stuff is uh, it's got us on track to do color variations for the monsters with like a thousand percent less work. Because um, that was going to be like a massive time commitment for me and Brooks, and it was going to have to be weighed against you know what we wouldn't get done as a result of doing it. And now it's something we can much more easily uh, like absorb into the schedule. So that was really cool. It also, uh, yeah, it reduces like load times and um, also will help modding in the future. Mm-hmm. Because you're gonna have one one value that dictates the color of uh, your character, opposed to having to touch up a bunch of textures you won't have the Photoshop files for. Yeah. So. Um, the statue being decapitated, etc. That's totally a great idea. Definitely gonna do that kind of stuff. Um, this is the sort of finished town. The way I kind of want to think about it is like, I want to get the super nice version in and then destroy it. Um, maybe I'll try and speed things up. I'm just kind of like taking my time with this. But um, as opposed to starting with like just a foundation and then trying to build a building out of it, it's a lot easier to to ruin stuff down. Um, mm. I, I find that anyway. Uh, we got a. Question that's kind of related to the color grading is: Are there going to be day and night cycles in town? Uh, yeah, we're going to use color grading for it. <laughs> color grading, color grading, color grading. Yeah, <laughs> just color grade everything. It's the new uh, lambda. It's oh, yeah. actually going to just be the game. You're just going to unlock different color grade palettes and uh, just change the color things constantly. All right, I think this works. Yeah, and also uh, one thing that might dictate the. Uh, Day night cycle in town will be town events. I imagine that will dictate like, oh, there's a storm brewing and whatever results that has. Oh yeah, we could do that stuff too. Yeah, we'd probably use a color grade for it. Uh, seasons, it's never snowing in Dark <laughs> Thunder, and sure, we can have seasons then. <laughs> yeah. Or we could do it in the background. If by know. season you mean any time of year without really defining which time of year it is, then yes. 
We have seasons. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I can show uh, actually some of the old stuff because I've been trying to do town stuff for ages. This is my like first take at it. Um. Oh, that's not the first take. Yeah, that was the first one. Wasn't uh, there one earlier than that where everything was on a hill? Oh, no, no, no. I did this one oh, after. Oh, look at that. That looks even earlier. So than... I did this one because I was like, I really want it all side on and blah, 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 and really flat looking. And then uh, I did this one because I'm like, fuck flat. It's got to look like this cool little town. Um, but it felt really like, I don't know, really kind of claustrophobic and not interesting to really look at. Everything just kind of blended together. Um and I was using up a lot of screen real estate for the house on the hill thing, which you see in the quest select screen anyway, so um, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more close in on the town itself. I got some help from my friend Daryl. Good old Daryl. Uh, good old Daryl. No idea who that is, but Daryl seems like a nice guy. He's a super awesome concept artist. All um, right. We got a suggestion from Rio Bucks. Maybe you can fix up the town so it looks better over time. That might be a good way of handling upgrades. Uh, yeah, that's the idea. It's All the stuff was there. It's just been ruined down, and you're sort of restoring it as opposed to like building it for the first time. Um, all right, let's fucking draw some shit here. Thanks for bearing with me. I'm just sort of... It's always hard doing these things because you don't want to change... Like, I don't want to jeopardize our schedule or what I'm supposed to be working on, and I don't want to, like, put on a big show and just have something pre-rendered. Um, but the result is it's not quite the performance art that some of the streams have been, where I have everything all ready to go, like the uh, like the character wallpapers and stuff. I was super well prepared for those. I could make a lot of, like, really tangible progress in a short amount of time over the stream. It's probably more entertaining to watch that stuff than this. But, I, uh, I find the rough stuff way more interesting. Really? Yeah, because I can't appreciate the uh, attention to detail as much as I can appreciate the just raw shapes and huh. line. That's interesting. Like, your painting technique is so far beyond what I understand of pressure-sensitive uh, digital painting. Whereas here you're dealing with lines, tangents, and... It's like way more mathy for you, hey? No, it's it's just more like somebody sketching in there. Oh, I see, I see. Like versus a painter spending an arbitrary amount of time on the sky, and I'm like, it still looks good. <laughs> um. So yeah, we've been getting lots of questions. Um, yeah, answer question. if you if you feel like. Uh, what are you oh yeah. Doing? Uh, so would you lose if your parties keep wiping? How much margin of error could uh, conceivably be tolerated with failed expeditions in a given save game? So one thing we're very cautious about is never letting you completely lose. Like, we don't have a campaign fail state. Um, That's a good way to put it. As a... Whereas XCOM does. Like, XCOM, you can actually lose the whole campaign. Um so we'll have some sort of scenario where, in the worst case, we'll let you get a fresh party. They'll be horrible, because they'll be all entry-level guys, and they'll have to work their way up. But we're never going to really prevent you from moving forward. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. There's no... You don't lose the game, uh, but you don't make forward progress. And then you can always recruit sort of the same basic four dudes, but they're completely fresh off the boat. And one thing I implemented like two hours ago um, <laughs> was guaranteeing that you have quests of all the difficulties per right. town, town run. So you're always going to have a level one quest. Um, so you're always going to have something you're able to do in the worst case. And even if you're not, even if you're in great shape and playing the game and, you know a ways through, you're still going to want those level 1 quests uh, for when you recruit like new people. Even though you can use some of your veterans to help like kind of power level them or whatever, you're still going to want like low level quests even a veteran player will. Yeah. Even a player like Kevin Regami will. Well, he's going to be like trying to speed run it on a dance pad 
Yeah. I've actually never watched his streams. Does he do it on the dance pad? I don't know. Jeff would know. <laughs> yeah, Jeff would know. Campaign Fail State, the punk band. That's actually pretty sweet. It's pretty pretty dope. Um, so we got a question uh, from... I'm going to try and pronounce this. Uh, Zetatol? If you have multiple cars, chars in the game of the same class, will there be different colors? Um, right, we're we going to have color customization. Um, and with color grading, it seems to be a lot easier. I um, still have to redo a lot of work. I'm just saying. But now you don't have to do one. Like, you won't have to. Uh, it won't be as bad. I think it'd be less work because you haven't done any alternate colors for any of the heroes. No, but I have to go back and clean up some of them because they don't respond to the color grades as well as we had hoped. Yeah. In, in some cases, but whatever. It's a small price to pay. Yeah. And it'll be easy for us to add new ones once it's done. So yeah, um, but yeah, you're going to be able to choose, have custom colors. Um, I don't know how many. Does I'd imagine three, three. four would make sense. Uh, we're going to do three per per character oh. to start. Yeah, because um, it'd be nice to have more is always more better this. of everything, you know. Yeah, but um, and that'll be something we'll be adding like during. Early access, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, yeah I think we're going to watch with that. New colors. Uh, we got a suggestion. Um, it would be interesting if some of the buildings, before you unlock them, for example, the church, you'd have a quest to go inside the church and kill some sort of necromancer inside, and then you would get the church unlocked. Um, well, we had essentially kind of do that other than going into the church but to get the church unlocked you need to go out and do missions in one of the areas that will give you the um, the reward type like the heirloom type that you need um, but it's we don't have like a tile set for inside the buildings for you to like walk around oh, I think my yeah, question will you have controller support Yes, we will. Um, we won't have that for the access launch, um, but we'll have that for a commercial release, I'd say. Yeah, I think it's definitely the hope for sure. Yeah. Um, I know I definitely play a lot of games on Steam Big Picture, so I would personally want to see uh, controller support work well. Yeah, me too. It would be nice to play the game on the TV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have a question. Do we plan on having the game playable only with the mouse? Um, well, I mean, you need the keyboard to rename guys, right? We're going to generate names for people who don't want to name them. Um, I think my kid just... I think his head exploded. Just give me one sec. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, that's why you have two people on the stream. Um... So we got a question from Crow. Uh, how many quests do you think will be available uh, at your team at any given time? This is something we're definitely going to be changing um, through early access, but currently we're, we have five in the current build, but subject to change. Um, and uh, you're always going to have a Darkest Dungeon quest available. So that kind of gets added on afterwards, and it's always, di it's always max difficulty. Um, whereas the other guys are going to be random or procedurally generated difficulties and lengths on each town. Okay, uh, my kid has snorted a piece of Lego up his nose. Uh, we don't have visual contact with the Lego. Uh, I'm looking at an emergency room visit. So unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going to have to cut the stream short. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, got it. Well, it was fun streaming. Thank you for everybody who's uh, tuned in. Um, well, I would have had half an hour to work on these buildings. Hopefully that would have been good. But, um, yeah, apologies. I'll try and do another one. I hope um, he's okay. Yeah, in the next couple days. Maybe I could do a bonus one or something on Sunday or whatever. But, um, yeah, okay, I got to go. I'm really sorry, guys. Yeah, okay, see ya.